Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. And so that was our trading range going through October, November. We rallied up to our 108 resistance, and we actually a few months later tested our 108. Uh, three support. Once again, though, every time sellers are selling at lower and lower prices, so um, this actually doesn't really look like the dollar wants to make any kind of a rally here. And eventually what happened is, is we took out that support area and we made new lows. And just a couple of weeks ago, we broke through that support area, and now we're testing this next support area down below here. Uh, right right above 100. So we're almost at parity versus the loonie. And of course, um, if this area of support here on this chart goes away, um, then there's really nothing to stop us from dropping all the way back down to this 95 area. So this again is a stage four decline, several counter trend rally opportunities for somebody that likes to trade. Anybody that's an option um, seller, of course you can sell options above and below these areas collect premium during this whole time. Um, even if you're not somebody who likes to trade a trading range, that's an, op that's an option for you. All right, so remember, um, if you're somebody that likes to trade trading ranges, your personality is suited for that kind of market, that's fine. If it's not exciting enough for you and it's boring, then avoid them. Um, you can sell premium, as I mentioned. Trend traders will always be trying to buy breakouts, and most of the times they fail. So you should understand trading ranges, and you should understand the reason for the trading ranges and the rules for trading them, whether you trade them or not. Select currencies that have support areas for um, uh, bottoms and resistance areas for tops. Understand that you are trading most of the time what we call the intermediate term trend if you are trading trading ranges, which is going to be counter to the primary trend. So be sure you take your profits on your longs in a downtrend quicker or your shorts in an uptrend quicker. And know your volatility. Several times you'll have big ranges and small ranges. A small range here is not the same as trading a great big range up here. Um, I believe Steve's going to have a great session on uh, volatility coming up here. So I'm sure he can make some suggestions for trading different types of trading ranges too. Okay? And of course, there's been plenty of ISE option webinars um, that'll explain strategies for volatility. So, so make sure you watch them all too. And uh, I have a rule that if a position declines by more than 50%, you can close the trade to preserve your capital. And try this on big charts, weekly, monthly, and daily charts. Uh, this is the euro. The euro was in a very, very strong um, uptrend. The dollar was in a strong downtrend uh, right before it actually bottomed here. So we said this is not the best candidate for trading range strategy. No solid support until we hit 64.50, and we were way up here at 66.50. But I said now the euro can't continue to go lower. Um, I'm sorry, the dollar can't continue to go uh, lower unless uh, the euro participates, okay? So we purchased a call, a 66.50 call, a January call at the time, the last time we did the webinar. And so we'll see that that situation turned out pretty good. We actually did bottom at around 66 here with the low in December. And of course, we did break out of there. So we have a new stage one accumulation and a new dollar uptrend. And we had a higher stage one accumulation followed by another uptrend. And just recently we rallied all the way back up to this resistance area here. So the January call uh, from 66 to 72 did reach the target pretty close to expiration. So that ended up working out okay. But now we could possibly top out up here. We rallied into some strong resistance. We're starting to trade sideways. 
So we could go sideways for a period of time, and who knows, we may actually resume our downtrend if we break out to the downside. Uh, the pound actually went sideways between 63 and 60. We plan for a potential trading range between 63 and 60. As it turned out, we hit the support the week we did the webinar um, last time. So we purchased a January 2010 call, uh, 6050 call. We're very close to support. And uh, we kind of rallied immediately afterwards, but eventually did go down and come down to the 60 area a few weeks later. Now, remember, if you're trading these calls and you're long, um, you've got to make sure you take your profits when you get up to this resistance area. This was the end of December when we hit the 63 target. So at that point in time, take the position off because you haven't got very much time left on that call. And the last thing you need is to have this happen. If there is resistance up here and there's some kind of a pullback, you'll lose whatever time you have left on that call. But the dollar did break through that resistance and did continue higher against the yen, I'm against the British pound. And it has the possibility, again, of topping out up here, kind of trading in a trading range again. If it breaks out to the downside, of course, this becomes a top. But if it breaks out to the upside, then we can continue with our bullish position versus the British pound. Um, Swiss franc, we've got another one of these beautiful um, descending triangles selling at lower and lower prices. Once we broke that descending triangle and absorbed all the buy orders, we actually rallied down to parity against the Swiss franc. But we found some support here at this prior low from July of 2008. And uh, right at 100 here, that became a psychological support area plus a prior low. And eventually we have uh, a breakout to the upside up to about 105 from here. Now you've got the possibility for continued higher prices if we break 105, so you have a potential breakout entry above here. But you also have the possibility of a pullback entry if we come back down to the origin of the rally. Don't know which one's going to happen, but either way, if you're somebody that likes to buy weakness, you can buy here. If you're somebody that likes to buy strength, you can buy the breakout. And uh, the problem here with this currency was our resistance was too close. And this is why I prefer, me personally, I prefer to buy down here, especially as an option trader. I like to buy, I like to buy when volatility is in my favor. I like to buy pullbacks. Buying here means buying strength, but if there's resistance nearby, that's usually where a trade like that is going to fail. And we rallied right into that resistance area. And, of course, that's the last thing that an option trader needs is to lose the time because they're fighting some kind of supply or resistance. Okay, so our new trading range now for the Swiss is between 104 and 108. Our Corona actually had a nice double bottom, gave us an opportunity to buy a call. Our target was the top of the trading range at around 70.50. So we could, we had two possibilities of buying the 67.50 call, and if you felt comfortable buying a put for protection at the same time, that's optional. But this currency actually got out right before the end of the year to the 73 area. But mostly it traded again. After the entry, it traded up and down, up and down. So if you got really, really close to a target or you get very, very close to your target, it's always a good idea to make sure you check whatever time is left on that option. Okay. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.